All right, good morning. Let me just do a quick refresher, make sure it's showing up and coming through. But hope everybody's having a nice morning. This is Paint with Lovejoy. And today's painting is a viewer request for Ramadan. Um, and we'll be doing a background color and then we'll be doing a silhouette design with black paint on top of it. And I do not celebrate Ramadan. That's why I said this was a viewer request, but I am happy to accommodate anybody that has um, something specific that they want me to paint and I can do it during the demo. So if you have something that you'd like, please let me know and leave a comment. So like I said, for today, I'm gonna do the background. We're gonna do um, kind of some orangish red up into blue and then purple as we get towards the top of the canvas. So that way it's kind of a night, um, a night scene. Uh, we'll have a big moon in here. And then, like I said, a black silhouette design um, in celebration of Ramadan. So um, just a quick refresher about what you're looking at on the screen. This canvas, I have re-gessoed it, reused it. Um, and there is a link in the description box if you want to reuse your canvas. Um, with the amount of demos that I paint, I don't really want to have a house full of canvases. So you can re-gesso them and paint on top of them again. And um, for beginner painters, that's actually something nice to kind of do. So that way you don't have to purchase tons and tons of canvas and you can get a lot of practice in. All right, so first, like I said, I'm gonna start on the bottom and we're gonna be scraping our paint and going darker as we get towards the top of the canvas. So I'm on an eight by 10 canvas, so I'm using a smaller knife, um, but I am gonna be using that edge and I'm gonna be doing my style scraping method. And for my repurposed canvas, canvas um, this knife scraping method is awesome um, for when you're repurposing canvases because then it leaves a little bit of a texture. Um, and in my normal work, uh, my professional work, I paint in this style and it's actually kind of nice to already have some of this texture on there and then I don't have to build up as many layers. So there are some benefits um, to re-gessoing your canvas. And you can use a brushwork to paint on top of a gessoed canvas um, if needed. All right. So just checking over, like I said, if you have any questions or anything about the painting process today, please feel to leave a comment in the chat. And I wanna say good morning to Rigi Fliegi, great name. Um, thanks for jumping on and joining. All right, so again, as I'm doing with the scraping palette knife, this is an untraditional palette knife method. And I am using a little bit of pressure with my finger and I'm not putting a whole lot of thick paint on here. I literally am just kind of scraping it on there and allowing the texture underneath to kind of shine through. So if you have anything that has pissed you off this week, or if you have anxiety, this is an awesome method to kind of alleviate some of your anxiety or stresses. Um, and literally just scrape into it. You can push pretty hard. Um, I am on a canvas, so there's a little bit of a give to it, but you can do this style on panels. And that's actually what I prefer painting on is flat panels. Um, but yeah, you basically just have fun with it. So we kind of have our base yellow on here. I'm gonna come in with the orange and gonna kind of start at the bottom and we'll probably go a little past there. And then I might put a little, scrape a little bit of white on there and then we'll get to blues and purples because I want to imagine that Maybe the sun is setting and the dark sky is starting to come in from the top. So, awesome. Hey, Anita, Janet, and Jen. Thank you guys so much for jumping on and hanging out with me today. All right, so now we're going to the orange and I am gonna scrape right on top of this so don't, it will mix a little bit. But this is the part that's really cool because when you already have that pre-texture on there and then you scrape another color on top of it, you can see the yellow from underneath and then it creates all these cool lines. So literally just great stress relieving, scrape it on here, have fun, hang out with me for a little bit. Um, hopefully while you're painting, we're just focused on the process of painting and nothing else in the world. I'm not even gonna mention them so you don't think about them, but just zone out into your creative process and escape the world for a little bit. And if you do want to see my traditional or my normal style for palette knife painting, you can jump onto my main art website, which is lovejoycreations.com, and then jump on over to my portfolio 
and take a look at my paintings and I paint in this style, but my paintings have about a hundred layers of paint scraped on them um, until I consider them to be finished. So, and I use a lot of unexpected colors and generally I hang out in the wildlife genre. All right, so since I'm gonna be putting blue up top and I don't really want my blue and my orange to mix a whole lot because on the color wheel, they are complementing colors. So they kind of cancel each other out when they do mix. We will have a little bit of an overlap, but I'm gonna put a base of white. So I'm gonna mix that blue into the white a little bit more compared to mixing it into the orange. So I am taking that white, scraping a little bit on my uh, regular white canvas, and I am overlapping the orange just a little bit with the white as well. And it's nice just kind of getting that fresh base on there, and then we'll be scraping our other color into it. And for any of my videos or this one, if you want to just use this as a guide, um, you don't have to do everything I do. You can switch out colors. You can do something different. Um, if you don't want to put the silhouette design that I'm going to put on here later, you can change it out and put whatever you want. All right. And let's see, checking out questions. Anita is asking, what type of acrylic paint do you use? And she's heard of student grade acrylics. And what's the difference between the store craft acrylics? All right. So that's a couple of questions in there. Um, so I use, because I'm a teacher, I buy in the half gallons and I use what's called chroma acrylics. They are student grade acrylics. Um, the closest that you'll find in the art store to the paint that I'm using here or what I use in my classes is Liquitex Basics. And Liquitex Basics is a student grade paint, um, but it's nice and affordable. And I like that brand as well as the chroma acrylics because I like how solid this stays. Other brands, you're gonna find craft paint um, and other brands that just kind of run and would start to blend together. So I like the thickness here. And then I also like that this takes about 20 minutes to dry. Some of your cheaper paints and a lot of the craft paints, um, they're not meant for long drying. They're not really meant for blending. So they do dry super, super quick. Um, and then let's see, other question was, so the difference between artist grade and student grade paint, student grade paint, um, they are on the cheaper side. They have less color selection, but they're a little bit, like I said, more affordable. So you can try a few things and they generally tend to be a little more transparent. So you would have to use either thicker paint or a couple coats of paint to get an opaque coverage. Artist grade paint, um, is more expensive. It's going to be a thicker, creamier, buttery, kind of nice consistency, and it is really nice to work with. So I recommend that if you get into painting, maybe move up to one color at a time, move up to an artist grade paint, and just give it a try. Um, for my work, I actually use both artist and student grade. Um, and I like the student grade because of the transparency. So if you do check out my artwork and you can see all the layers, I do incorporate the transparent element of student grade paint in my process. So find what kind of works for you. If it's a combo of a couple of different paint brands or paint uh, styles, you know, find what works for you. For those of you using the craft, um, I think they're the Apple Barrel, the Folk Art, those little tubes that you can get at Michael's or Joanne Fabrics or Walmart, and they're like a dollar or two. Those are really good. Um, they can kind of paint on anything. And they're really good for just like a one application. They're not so great for blending just because they dry so quickly. So you may encounter some more frustration with your blending um, with those paints compared to uh, the acrylic paints. So hopefully that either thoroughly answered your question or at least got <laughs> most of it in there. All right, so as I was answering all of that, I was scraping the blue on top of it. I did scrape on top of the yellow. I'm starting to scrape a little bit on top of the orange and you can see where it starts to get um, kind of a muted color. I am gonna go back up with the yellow and the orange and kind of scrape on top of it so we don't have such a harsh transition. But like I said, just kind of fun. And I'm trying to allow my bottom of the canvas to stay a little bit uh, 
untouched so that way it can dry by the time I get to putting the uh, silhouette design on there. So I am going to go ahead and move right into purple and I'm going to get that purple on that top section. Same application and it may blend a little bit. Actually I really like the purple and blue color combo. So if you like it on yours and you want to fill up your whole blue and purple, go ahead and do that. I'm going to do mine on the edge. And then if I change my mind, once that's done, then I might fill in the whole area. But like I said, I just, I really like how the transparency of these colors mixes. And whoops, without even realizing it, I ended up scraping over the whole thing. So apparently my subconscious did want that. So as you get into the painting process, I highly recommend trusting your instincts, you know, and kind of going with the flow of where you feel like going. Um, this is the creative process, so it's not the end of the world or anything, but jump down and dive down through some of your, your instincts and try things, experiment. Uh, creativity is a nice kind of safe place to just try new things. You don't even have to show your boss or your coworkers, even if you throw it away, but just give it a try. So now I'm actually taking that purple and I am overlapping the orange a little bit, and I'm grateful that this orange... Um, is a little bit dry. When I scape, scrape them on kind of thin, they do dry a little bit quicker. And I'm kind of liking that transition as well. So play with yours. We will come back up with some orange. And this is a bit more, I guess, what we call visual blending, because I'm not actually mixing the colors together. But as we look at it visually, um, it's transitioning from our blues to our purples to our other colors. So there are many ways to blend. Um, your paint or create your composition. All right, so I'm gonna wipe that off. I see a few more things on here. Excellent. Um, awesome, so let's see. Next question, Jen is asking, are there a good, uh, blah, sorry, I was trying to read four things at once. There's a good cheap upgrade. They don't dry super fast and the color pigment is good. And they're under 25, good brushes. Oh, okay. What brand were you talking about, Jen? Oh, Salvador Paint Set. Excellent, excellent. Awesome, so yeah, I like that you guys are sharing information with each other. That's part of developing the community. And if you find something that works, definitely let other people know. Um, I'm a bit of a, I tend to stick with the same brands that I like, so I stick with Liquitex and Goldman paints, um, and then certain knives and stuff, but try other things. Try and just see what works. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit more orange and just kind of work on this transition here, and then we'll give it a little time to dry. There we go. And yeah, again, because this is transparent, we get to play with just the layering of the colors. And I am scraping right on top of the purple Decent amount of pressure. All right. And I'm actually inclined to do one more round of purple on there just because I'm really liking how that looks. But feel free to adjust yours to what you like. And again, just putting one more layer on top of here creates just such cool depth. And if you just focus on one little maybe two inch section of your canvas with a couple of these colors on there. It's just, I find it quite fascinating. All right. And oh, I forgot to mention that if you are painting on a stretch canvas, continue that color around the sides, the tops and the bottom. It just looks really nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around the edge. Awesome. Cool, cool. All right, so let's see. I'm gonna move over to brushwork and I've got two pictures for the silhouette design that I'll be kind of referencing from. We're gonna kind of put our base shape on there and then we have our roof structures and then our tower, or our, um, I can't remember what they're called, but the decorative elements on top of the roof structures, so. Okay. All right. So with that, I'm actually going to start with 
the medium sized brush. And if you want to do this with the knife, go right ahead. And let's see, we're going to put a little bit of a ground. So go into the left hand side. I'm going to go up maybe about a half inch, three quarters of an inch, place a little dot. Same thing on the other side. And then I'm just going to kind of connect them and fill that portion in and then I'll build the roof line. And again, you're just applying that paint kind of thick going right over it. You do want opaque coverage. If your paint underneath on your background is still wet, uh, the black is a bit more overpowering. So just apply your paint thicker or um, pause the video, let your paint dry and then pick it back up after your paint is dry. So a couple options. All right, and again, grab those edges if you're on a stretched canvas. Okay. Excellent, excellent. All right, so now we're gonna work on some of these roof structures. And I forgot exactly what they're called, but they're kind of a circular shape. A few images that I see, they're a bit more triangular, but I like the circle or cir circular shapes today, if I can speak correctly. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. We just got somebody else that jumped on. So perfect video for you um, to paint your mosque. Thanks. All right, so like I said, we're working on the roof structures here and these don't have to be perfect. And if you find that you're kind of shaky as you're going to do this, exhale as you touch your brush to the canvas. And see there, I even held my breath for a minute. So we're creating kind of that circle, circular structure. And if you want yours a little more pointed, you can. If you do have a specific image of a silhouette design that you're referencing, just break your image down into simple geometric shapes, circles, squares, rectangles, and triangles. All right. And let's see. Let's put a building structure here. So I'm just going to add a little bit more to my horizon line and then we'll put some details on top of that. And when you are doing silhouette stuff and you're breaking it down into just simple shapes, it does look kind of weird. So don't be too judgmental about what you're painting um, until you're kind of done with the painting because it does change. So with that being said, I think I forgot to mention it earlier, I do recommend that you take progress photos while you paint. Um, and progress photos are great for when you're done and you know what your final image looks like. And then you go back and look at the awkward and in between stages and start recognizing how you interpret each picture differently as you get rid of either the white canvas space or as your image starts to take shape. And a lot of things about art has more to do with your observation of yourself rather than being or creating something perfect. All right, so I'm just putting different size domes um, and they're either half circles. If you want yours a little bit more pointy with a triangular shape, go right ahead and adjust yours. And let's see, we've got a few towers on here. So for the tower, I'm going to use the full width of the brush and just kind of place it and then pull it right back down. If that is too much for you, move down to one of the small pointy brushes. And as you're using either brush, you want to play with the pressure of your brush. Light pressure and treating it kind of like a pencil and just using the tip of it will create smaller and skinnier lines where more pressure um, will create wider and fatter lines. Um, let's see, let's get another tower up here and let's make this one a little taller. And I want that one going off the edge of the canvas. And when you get close to your canvas, if you do have an element like this that goes off and even our circle over here that goes off, it gives the viewer a concept that there's so much more outside of the canvas than what you've actually painted. Um, and compositional wise, that's a really nice thing to do. You want to imagine that you've just captured a small section and it's very intriguing, but you want the viewer to realize there's so much more happening. All right, so let's see. Um, let me do another little small one down here, and then I'm going to move to the small pointy brush for more details. And uh, one more other thing, 
If you start realizing that your strokes are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, check your brush. If you've got a lot of buildup on your brush, wipe it off and that brings the bristles kind of back together. Grab some more paint and then it might be a little bit easier to make some of those smaller lines again. So be kind to yourself as you are learning to paint. Your brain's taking in a lot of information um, and you're doing a lot better than you may be giving yourself credit for. All right, so throwing that in the water, moving down to the small pointy brush. And I'm gonna make this image just a little bit bigger. All right. So again, using just the tip of the brush and if you need to, you can put your pinky out and rest that somewhere on the canvas and use that as your pivot point or rest your forearm against the edge of the table. Um, these are just different little things to help as you go through the process of painting. You will find your own groove. So I'm putting a little roof structure on top of this tower. And again, I hold my breath too, so sometimes I have to remember to breathe. And then putting a little roof little domed roof on top of this and it is going off the edge of the canvas let's see let's do the same thing here to make it a little bit easier for you guys to see and I am allowing leaving the negative space for kind of a window so we can see through it and see the background If you find that some of these little lines are truly very, very difficult, be kind to yourself. And if you need to, you can always wait for your paint to dry and use a Sharpie marker. Um, and that helps get some of those little details in there. Or you can, if you wanna do it with the paint, switch down and use a toothbrush, uh, not a toothbrush, sorry, I can talk, um, a toothpick. I just brushed my teeth right before the video <laughs> so it was fresh on my mind but you can use a toothpick to um, create your smaller lines again creativity is more about utilizing what you have in front of you or what you have at home right now and just making the best of that um, I'm loving all the museum pictures to where people are recreating famous paintings with the stuff that they have at home that is awesome creative use and I hope that concept kind of sticks around after all this is done and settled um, just because I think it's awesome so on some of these domes and again you can reference more of what you want um, I'm putting another little small circle and then a line and then just adding little dots around the line to add the decorative elements um, on top of these roofs And again, if you're finding that you're shaking as you are touching the canvas with your brush, just exhale as you touch the canvas and it gets a little bit easier. I have found that because I am talking while I'm painting, I am less likely to hold my breath, but there still comes moments to where that happens. So, All right, I'm just getting these extra decorative elements on there. See, we've got another guy over here. And we will be putting a big moon, a crescent moon, up in the sky and then some stars with white paint. Now, as you get into painting, and especially as you get kind of towards the conclusion of your painting, be kind to yourself. And then I want you to prop your painting up and look at it from a distance of five to 10 feet away. And that is more of the normal viewing distance for most things in life. So don't be upset if you actually like your painting more from that distance compared to two feet in front of you while you paint it. Um, and a lot of times you will realize that as you look at it from a distance, maybe you need to go and make an element bigger, maybe you need to adjust a color. I want you to trust that because um, a lot of painting is you communicating with the canvas. Um, the canvas always wins, so don't fight too much with it, but you are conversing. You're strengthening your power of observation by observing what you're painting, and then you're translating it through to what you are doing on your canvas. All 
right. And nice. I like that you guys are talking with each other. Hi, Mike. Thanks for jumping on. Still waiting to see one of your paintings. All right. So just adding a few more elements. And as you guys are painting at home, please send me pictures of what you paint. Um, I find them very exciting in the morning to check out uh, my emails and see all the different creative pictures people are sending me. So email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com or tag me in your social media outlets at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy. So on some of the pictures that I'm referencing, there was a nice crescent moon on top of some of these towers. Um, so feel free to add that. And for your crescent moon, if you want to practice on a scrap sheet of paper, you basically make a tilted C shape. Um, but like I said, just practice. You'll find your groove. If it's too much with the brush, you can do it with the Sharpie marker. All right, let's add a few more elements just filling in some of the extra space and then we'll be moving on to the moon and the stars and as you're painting this at home if you're inclined to do your silhouette in a different color like maybe black or we're using black maybe purple or even teal feel free to switch it up let's do another crescent moon up here I'm going to clean the brush really good. I am going to go back to that middle size brush just because I'm going to make a pretty decent sized crescent moon up there. And you get your option for your crescent moon. You can either do straight yellow, straight white, or a mixture of the two. So feel free to do what you want. I think I'm going to do the white just so there's a bit more contrast. So I'm using that flat brush. Cleaned it really good to bring the bristles uh, together. And I'm basically going to just use the tip of it and kind of pull it sideways to create this C shape. So again, loading that up pretty well. You can place your moon wherever you like. Um, the few that I'm referencing are fairly close to the cityscape. So I'm going to do mine about right here. So I'm starting at the top of my C shape, light pressure, breathe, and then just pull it around. So you want to get your base shape on there. And then maybe go back and just thicken it up a little bit, give it a little bit more meat. And on mine, I can see through the paint. So I'm going to go back once I have my sh uh, shape on there and just apply my paint a little bit thicker. So that way it's more opaque. And with it being student grade paint, it's not going to keep the texture. It will flatten out a little bit as it dries. And if your moon ends up changing shape, maybe it gets a little bit bigger by doing this. That's okay. That's just where you're painting for today. And if you paint this again, your muscles are going to remember what you did here. And it'll be a little bit easier the second time. All right. So for stars, you can either move back to the pointy brush. And all we're going to be doing is just basically making little dots for each star. If you've got a specific constellation you want to put in there, go for it. Um, and I'm going to give you two different options for how you can apply it. You can use the brush. And then, like I said, you're just basically making little dots. You're touching the canvas and pulling the brush right back. If you want to use the back end of the brush, you can do that as well. Same thing. You just kind of glob it on there. And again, it does kind of create a little peak of the paint. But that will dry a little bit um, and flatten as the paint dries. And try to keep your stars kind of random. You don't want them in a nice order unless you're uh, creating a specific constellation. And even then, they're not in a lined up order. They're still kind of random. And like I said, if you want to do shooting stars, anything you may like 
And if you haven't liked this video, please make sure you hit the like button. Um, I get kudos from YouTube every time that happens and for the amount of people that watch these. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos. And jump on over to my Paint with Lovejoy website. Check out my monthly classes, my free classes. I've got painting bundles on there for you to paint at home. There's kits I can ship you. But during this time that we all have to stay at home, please find creative outlets and appreciate all the art that you are turning to. Everybody's turning to movies, books, music, creativity. And remember how important the arts are in everyday life as you move into your life after all of this, when things settle down. All right, so thanks so much for everybody hanging out with me. I so appreciate you coming here every morning and keeping this going. I thoroughly, thoroughly love having this as a regular morning painting, so. All right, and yeah, if you want me to paint something specific, leave a comment, and I do on the main uh, page of my YouTube channel. You can scroll down and you can see the future live streams, and I'll just be adding to that with the subjects you guys want me to paint. So thanks again for hanging out. Until tomorrow, everybody have a great day. Cheers.